Hey, welcome back. It's good to see you all again. Hope you're all well. Thanks for joining. Uh, today on my bench, I have another NAD piece of equipment. This is a Stereo Receiver 712. This was brought to me by the same gent that brought me the 2100 power envelope uh, power amplifier. He brought them as a pair. He wanted me to check them both over. Um, we already did the 2100 power amp if it's in a previous video. If you want to go back and view that, you can. Um, but I hope you stay here and watch this one because this one might be a little interesting. I don't know. Um, he brought me this receiver. He wanted me to go over it. Um, he was not really specific on what problems it had. He said something about a display was out or needed fixing, a backlight. Um, but I think he just wanted a general service just to get any bugs that are on this, in this thing out of the open and fixed. So let's, uh, I got it plugged in and I got it connected to speakers. Let's try it out. I'm sure it's working. And we have no power light. No power light. What is going on here? Okay, we got audio. And no. Okay, I'm on auxiliary. That's odd. Oh, tape monitor. Okay. He told me he was using this as a preamplifier and he wasn't using the audio amplifier in it. Maybe the band, it has a problem, but it does. Both channels are working. Left, right. So we're good that way. Let's look at some of the features. Uh, it's got a button that says extra speakers. That's kind of unusual. Usually you have a speaker switch for each channel. It does have two speaker channels on the output. So I guess you can switch one of them off, but not the other. That's my take on it. Bass treble controls, balance. And then we have the AM FM tuning. Uh, let's switch it to AM. We've got no light. But we do have the LCD working. Tuning. No antenna, obviously, but it is working. Okay, try FM. That's not a good noise. That's kind of a scratchy. It's got a weird, it's got a weird um, step pattern here. You got 103.75. If I can't really read that, it says 103.72, 70. Six seven, so it must be set to the wrong step pattern. Okay, so it's holding presets. So that's good. FM tuner is working with zero antenna on it. It's actually pulling a signal in. Mono button and your function selector down here in the bottom here. So it sounds like it's working, except we have a burnout light. On the back, we've got our inputs. It does have video, a little bit of video here. What do we have? Uh, video switching for laser disc and uh, video surround. So I don't know if you can classify this as an AV receiver. I don't think it's of that era where they started packing in all the video stuff. But um, it's got the NAD link, tuner inputs. It has a soft clipping feature, like most ads, and it has a selectable speaker impedance output, which actually sets up your power amplifier for whatever speakers you're using, and two courtesy outlets. So let's uh, have a look inside. All right, so I got the screws out, and let's take the cover off. Looks nice and clean. And here's our receiver. Let me unplug this. It's all power supply section on this side. You got power transformer here, a secondary power transformer 
or auxiliary power transformer. That's probably for the remote um, standby supply. This does does operate with the remote. And here's all our mains voltage wiring. Got kind of a unique transformer. It's pretty squat and flat. Heat sinking. Uh, kind of interesting one board solution that they used here. Everything is packed onto one. There's our speaker outputs and our tuner inputs. It's kind of motorized volume control. And here's our backlighting assembly. I don't know if it's burned out, but we'll figure that out yet. Some power supplies here. Probably um, 79 or, se or 78 series regulators. Okay, everything looks good so far. All right, here's a look at the bottom with the panel removed. Uh, looks like somebody's been in here resoldering these. It looks like they, these are the three regulator chips, I'm assuming. Looks like uh, somebody has been in here resoldering the crack solders. Um, but there's probably a few more if I keep looking. I don't know, you can see there's a little bodge wire here. I don't know if that was factory or not. Somebody's been doing some repairs to this, which is fine. Okay, we'll have to have a good look at it and uh, we'll see what it needs. So another thing I noticed here that's not working is uh, I have a couple of LEDs out. Uh, power LED is not working. And the volume control LED is very dim. I don't know if that's, I didn't see it on the, uh, it's too dim to see. It doesn't seem like it's like it's flight, it's not working properly. It's, it's cutting in and out. So I don't know what the story is with this. Looks like it's sitting in a socket of some kind. But maybe we can replace these LEDs to get them working again. That one's not working at all. All right, so here's a look at the main filter capacitors. Pulled them out to test them. Uh, let's see what we got here. Here's a pair of here's a pair of 6800 microfarad at 50 volts, and that's all they had for the main filter capacitors. So we we'll hook this one up, and what are we getting? We're getting around 5,700 microfarad, and it's got about 25 milliohms ESR. ESR is okay, so we're down quite a bit on the capacitance. We're down pretty near 1,100 microfarads. And then it's the other one. It's slightly better, not much. 23 milliohms, 24, and uh, 57 and a half. 100 microfarads. So I'm going to replace these. Uh, let's see what I have here. 50 volts. I'll see if I have 10 thousands. Let me see what I got in stock here. Hang on. All right. So here's the originals. And I do have 6800s in stock. Exact same size. Brand new. Uh, 63 volt though and I also have these 10,000 microfarad at 50 volt which will work as well the same height physically but they're a lot more bigger in diameter but I think there is enough room here on this board to get these puppies in and uh, let's see if they fit there's lots of real estate around this these capacitors I think they will fit Get positive to positive. Yeah, look at that. I think we're going to upgrade to 10,000 here. Because there is room for one. 
that should give it a little bit more kick if I can get it in yeah, I'll play with that later um, I'm also checking all the other caps and I'm finding these capacitors here next to these voltage regulators are all cooked so I'll be replacing some of these uh, most of these and a lot of the other ones I'm tech testing they're they're coming back okay maybe some of them are going to be a little tired and the tired ones I'll change out but the ones that are coming back okay I'll leave them alone and then we'll have to address this uh, backlight for the LCD uh, it's a burned out incandescent somebody I don't know what's going on here with this resistor that's tacked on the back it didn't look factory to me um, I'm trying to clean this up and have a look at it I'm trying to find it on the schematic too so we'll get on that but let's uh, get the capacitors dealt with first and then we'll do on, on the lighting all right so I'm going through the power supply section here and I'm just replacing some capacitors this capacitor here was dead C545 um, it was a 10 microfarad at 50 volts and it measured out at about 5 microfarads and about 300 ohm ESR but some, something's not right here um, there's two resistors you can see one here I pulled out from where it's located on the board it says diode 516 and then there's another resistor here that's located in the area for diode 518 now if I look in the schematics these are supposed to be uh, two Zener diodes in series 3.3 volts to provide a 6.6 .6 volt drop across the supply voltage before it gets into this 12 volt regulator this is a 7812 this is a 12 volt voltage regulator and I'm assuming this you know supplies tuner audio circuits whatever doesn't matter the problem is they're trying to drop 30 five volts or so from your rails down to a suitable amount so that the voltage regulator doesn't overheat so they're trying to provide some pre-dropping here with this resistor or zener diodes anyways that aren't there but uh, these two resistors are 33 ohm at 3 watt and if I looked on the other side here you can see this you can see the, the pad is missing it's from heat damage right uh, this one was cracked this one the pad was completely ripped off the board um, and this other resistor here too is also loose if I wiggle it I don't know if you can see it this wire is wiggling and I think that pad is getting ripped off so I'll have to do repair on these these two resistors so I'm gonna put the resistors back in I'm gonna relocate this capacitor on the bottom where it's cooler because this is the one that failed uh, completely um, I'm also going to replace these five other capacitors just because they're in the vicinity and they're probably heat stressed um, I might relocate these two on the bottom as well if there's room uh, these ones I'll replace leave on top they're definitely far enough away about an inch or so to keep the heat uh, from affecting it but uh, just showing you a few of the problems I'm finding in this power supply I think these cracked joints on these two resistors is probably causing the owner problems and headaches with regards to uh, intermittent problems um, audio cutting in and out uh, reason sh it could be shutting off for no reason going dead even this is a little loose I'm gonna have to fix all this up yeah, there's quite a bit of heat here that's the problem okay so I'll get through and replace all this stuff except for these two resistors and I'll make sure everything's secured down good all right so let's talk about the lighting here on this receiver um, the lamp for the digital display on the tuner was burned out now this came from the factory this little board was attached back here and then had came from the factory with two incandescent lamps wired in series and uh, then it was affixed there and they fed it with a total of 24 volts this 24 volts comes from the positive 12 negative 12 regulators uh, so it's a regulated 24 volts and it's clean it's DC 
and they were running two uh, incandescent lamps and they have a 47 ohm dropping resistor here to cut the current down on those lamps a little bit they must have been 12 volt lamps or maybe they were yeah they were probably were 12 volt lamps and they they put the 47 ohm in there just to cut it down a little bit more so somebody came in here and replaced uh, before they replaced one of the burned out lamps with a 68 ohm resistor and this was tacked on the end of the board it was uh, pretty uh, well the soldering wasn't the greatest let's uh, let's put it that way but um, the remaining lamp was still there working but it was working at half brightness because there was only one lamp instead of two right so uh, I propose to get rid of all this and I am going to install two warm white LEDs in series on this board and then I'm going to mount the board back on the here and be done with it and then to cut down the current for the LEDs I'm going to change this 47 ohm resistor to a uh, three well Matt calculates out to about 3.5k but 3.5k I don't have in stock it's not a standard value I could jump to either 3.3k or I do have 3.6k so what I'll do is I'll put a 3.6k resistor here uh, it doesn't need to be more than a quarter watt because we're consuming like eight milliwatts or something like that for this whole circuit um, and uh, this will provide lots of light for the for the display it'll be warm white so we won't have any color distortion uh, associated with when you put cold white lights in uh, you get that color distortion so that's my plan for this so I'm gonna get busy with that okay so I made the changes put in a 3.6 K resistor here and solder two LEDs in series these are gonna be running uh, they're running in series now they're gonna have about five maybe four milliamps running through them so they're gonna stay cool they're gonna have a long life uh, just to show you what they look like and then we'll put it in here put it in the holder if it'll fit might have to trim a little bit of the plastic here but we can see our display is nicely lit up now and it's a neutral color it's not too blue or too green so I'll shut this off I'm gonna have to secure this down secure that PCB board and then I'll uh, get some adhesive on there to make sure it doesn't fall off okay so I think I got this to the point where I'm ready to do, start doing some testing um, give you an update of what I did here I replaced probably 15 20 caps mostly around this power supply section and this power supply section here and then I spot changed a few uh, other capacitors like these two here are uh, input DC blocking input capacitors for the power amplifier and they didn't test very good so I changed those two and they're like matched now and then there's two down here in the preamp fire stage that's replaced there was a couple here in the power amplifier stage I replaced so just a few that were weak um, I didn't replace all of them because they're not all weak some of them are still held, holding up pretty good especially in the tuner in the areas where there's low heat um, a lot of heat in this area here so that's where I found most of the dead capacitors and um, few capacitors were weak here in the in the power supply these two main filters were were pretty weak so they got upgraded to 10,000 microfarads so I think I'm at the point now where I can start doing the alignment and first step in the alignment is set the DC balance for the outputs so we're gonna do left channel first it's gonna connect up a voltmeter and uh, we'll turn this on We didn't plug it in yet. Okay, so let's plug it in. And what we want to adjust is pot R411, which is hiding under here. And that's for the left channel. So let's turn this on. 
Let's see what it's supposed to be. The spec is plus minus 30 millivolts. And the amplifier is still settling. It's kind of bouncing everywhere. Uh, so the, the instructions are, this is for the output offset voltage. No load, no input signal. Okay, let's turn this down. Maybe that's got something to do with it. Uh, DC voltmeter across left channel speakers. Adjust 411 for plus minus 30 millivolts. And we have about 9 millivolts here. So let's adjust it down to zero. Seems to be climbing a little. Wrong way. Okay, that's not bad. Two millivolts. It's still gonna climb when it warms up. Okay, let's do the other channel. seven and a half millivolts and then we need to adjust R412 for the right channel and that is over here it wasn't far off to tell you the truth it was pretty much close bang on so we'll let that go for a while and then I'll check it again let's go back to the left channel Yeah, it's slowly climbing. All right, now for the bias adjustment, the idle current. This is a little more complicated. The If you go into the service manual, it tells you that you need to... Uh, here, let me go and get this. Maybe this will make some more sense to you. Okay, this is the output stage of the power amplifier, the two output transistors. Here's your two emitter resistors, they're 0.22 ohms at uh, two watts, there's two of them. And then your B connection, that's your speaker out line to your, to your speakers. What they want you to do is, there's a jumper here at TP401 and 403. There's a jumper, there's actually a link soldered in that bypasses. And they want you to cut this link or remove it and measure the voltage across this one ohm resistor. Problem is, um, there is no one ohm resistor here. It's been removed or it was never put in. So what I'm gonna have to do is find a one ohm resistor that's fairly accurate in, in value, install it in here, and then remove this link, do my bias testing, connect up my probes to these two points, measure the voltage, do my adjustments, let it settle, do my adjustments again, and then I have to return everything back to normal. I have to short this link out again to provide full current and no, no, uh, no current going through the resistor. So that's what I gotta do now. So I'm gonna hunt up a couple of one ohm resistors. They don't have to be uh, big ones. Uh, anything will work. We're just doing this as an idle test, so a quarter watt would work. So I'll uh, see if I can hunt up some resistors now. And I'll show you the location. Okay, I can show you the location where they're going to be doing this. Let me shut this amp off. This link here, LK322, that's the one that needs to be cut or removed. And then this other resistor here, that's where I need to install a 1 ohm resistor. And it didn't come from the factory like that. It uh, they must have cheaped out on those two resistors, so i got to supply those myself. So I'll put the resistors in. And then I'll uh, cut the link, do the measurements, and uh, we'll get, get on with this. All right, so here we go again. This time I got the uh, one ohm resistors. I selected two, uh, what was there, about half watt, 5%. But I selected a um, resistor that's within 1%, so they're, they're pretty close, so we can get an accurate reading. And then I soldered on um, a couple wires so that I can attach my clip leads so we can take a measurement. And then I uh, lifted one leg of the jumper with uh, 
soldering iron so I don't have to cut it. And then we can come back and reset the jumper without having it cut in half. All right, so we're gonna do the right channel first. Or is it the left channel? I can't remember which is which here. But uh, got the voltmeter connected. Make sure this isn't shorting because there's 35 volts on that. Turn this on. And uh, what we're looking for is the manual states between 25 and 35 millivolts on the uh, bias across those resistors. So we're going to adjust that right now. If I can find a screwdriver. And we're going to adjust R444. So let's turn this one up a bit. We'll set it for 30. Actually, I'll turn it down a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll re-fine tune that. Okay, yeah, one of the wires I tacked on broke off. Let's turn this on again. And we should, we're looking for 30 millivolts. Just let it warm up for a bit. So let's turn this one up. I'm going to let that settle for 10 minutes and I'll come back and retweak it and then uh, we'll get on to doing some power tests. All right, so we're all ready to do a power test here. I've got my load wired in. Got it scoped on both channels. Top trace is the left channel. Got the uh, voltmeter hooked up, so let's turn this on. Okay, so I just want to check these pots. I don't think we have any scratchiness on them. They're all good. Balance pot. Everything's good. Volume pot. All the pots are clean. I'm not going to touch them. Okay, let's shut the speakers off. And let's start increasing the power here. I'll have to turn down my scope. Bit. Okay. And it's clipping there. Let's back it off a bit. And where are we at? 15.37 volts RMS on 8 ohms. But hang on a second here. I am set up for 4 ohm impedance. So let's change this to 8 ohm impedance. Shut the unit off first. Okay. Turn this back on. See what we get out of this now. And about there, it starts clipping first on the top. And I'm getting 18.02 volts RMS. Everything looks good, nice and clean. Let's um, have a better look at the probes. Clipping. The right channel seems to clip a little bit sooner than the left, which is not a big deal. Yeah, 18.31 is pretty much max. Actually, that's into the clipping almost. 
so I would say 18 even. Let this cook for a while. See how it does. I don't want to do it too long. Power supply looks clean. Okay, I think I've seen enough. It's working good. Let's do a little bit of frequency response. I'll set the uh, sweep generator up. All right, so I got it set up for sweep and I'm gonna feed it a signal from 10 Hertz to 50 kilohertz. And I'm basically just looking for how flat the amplifier is. And I have a feeling it's gonna do pretty good. So let me run this. And you can see on the screen, the left channel, which is the top, is actually a little bit lower in amplitude than the right. But I think that's just a function of the balance control. It's maybe not perfect. So I'll try and balance this out a little better. So they're both the same. But as you can see, as it runs from 10 hertz all the way up to 50 kilohertz, it's pretty flat. It's flat as a board. It doesn't drop off anywhere. Maybe once it gets up past 40 kilohertz, it drops off a dB or so. But I think that's pretty damn good. Um, I'm going to leave this as is. I think we're done. I'm going to wrap it up. And we'll uh, get this finished. All right, so I filmed this little clip at the end because I went through the uh, the ending comments and uh, the video clip and uh, I discovered this thing's not working properly. It uh, was flashing. His poor connection and his LED wasn't, uh, wasn't doing that. So I'm gonna insert this video clip back into the body of the film and uh, we're gonna try addressing this right now. I have a feeling See, I'll show you how this works. Current for this LED comes from a microprocessor. And I think it's this wire here. It's one of these two. Anyways, it comes out of this connector. It goes, flows through this 470K ohm resistor, or 400 ohm, 47, uh, blah, blah, blah. It flows through this 470 ohm resistor and then it goes into this here, which is um, pins that go up into this little uh, device that is just a wiper assembly. And I have a feeling if I pull that off, I think I can just pull it off without breaking it. If I do break it, well, I'm sorry. Let's try pulling this off. I did try spraying some stuff in there to clean it up, but it didn't work. Let's try pulling on this side. There we go. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a metal track and it's got two wipers. So we just gotta clean this up. I got some contact cleaner here. And we'll just, this is, uh empty to buy a new one okay yeah it's pretty dirty that's the reason why it was making a really flaky contact it was the light with the LED was flashing and uh, blinking and shutting off 
and uh, at first I thought it was a bad LED so I pulled the LED apart and looked at it and it seemed okay but uh, this is the reason the reason why so what I'll do is I'll just put a little drop of deoxid on the contacts let's do that right now I drop on this one and this one spread it around I don't want too much and put this back together that should work now Okay, put it back in and then we'll close her up. Okay, so that does it for this one. A um, few things I wanted to talk about though. This light here, um, I went through the schematics and it is connected to an output from the microprocessor and it's called a standby. So this indicator here is showing it when it's in standby, but when I turn the machine off, uh, there's nothing there. I don't understand how this works. It might have something to do with the remote control um, action of start shutting it off. Not sure. Uh, stereo center tune is all working. Uh, this LED here, if you can see that in the in the camera, it's quite dim. And this LED is also triggered off of another um, line from another uh, the, the processor. And I'm really not sure what its purpose is. Maybe it's still defective. But it's flashing on and off. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I'm going to have to revisit this, I think. There might be something here that's gone wrong. Okay. But anyways, um, a few other things I noticed. Screws are missing. These side screws on both sides were missing. And I don't remember taking them out. And usually I'm pretty careful with, with screws. I put them in this tray. I put all the parts in this tray. And uh, here they stay until I, it's time to reinstall them or put them back on. So there's no extra screws here. I had to actually dig, go and dig through my stash and find a bunch of screws. Which is not a big deal, but it's uh, fixed up now. So we did have burned out incandescent lamp. Uh, somebody went in there previously and removed one and substituted a resistor for its its place. But this one uh, is burned out, it's perished. And then you can see we have about 15 capacitors that were um, bad and uh, tested bad. And so we replaced all those mostly in the power supply section here and here but we also replaced a few caps in the power amplifier just to clean it up and make it sound a little better but it does sound good now um, i still want to check into this flashing light here because it, that's not normal so but other than that it's time to wrap it up and um color a day I'll give this back to the to the owner and I'm sure he'll be happy to see it again all right thanks for watching